Hi everyone, and welcome to the only three things you need to be successful in the new year. I'm Susan Barancini Mo, the CEO of Business and Blue Jeans and author of the book by the same name. I'm a startup and business growth specialist. I focus on business coaching and helping you to figure out what's not working in your business and make it work better. And I also do a lot of digital marketing strategy. And if you've been following me for any measure of time, or even if you haven't, just about every year, I do a year-end webinar to help you wrap up this year and start to plan your new year. And there's a lot of planning that goes on, and I show you exactly how to plan. I give you lots of free tools. There's usually a very fancy workbook involved. And this year, I'm doing something a little bit different. First, you will notice this is not a live webinar. Um, part of that is scheduling. <laughs> um, this this uh, calendar year has gotten a little crazier because of some different things that I'm working on. Um, but the other thing is that <clears throat> when I took a look back over my last few years and I said, what do I want to do differently for my new year? I thought, I want to do a different kind of webinar because, and I want to do a different kind of year-end planning. Um, one thing I've noticed throughout the years, especially in the last year or two, is that I a lot of you, and, and please don't take offense to this, but a lot of you show up for the free webinars and that's all you show up for. And the truth is that while the free webinars can be very helpful and beneficial, you can get a lot of introductory knowledge through doing that. Um, it's sort of like trying to n figure out what a puzzle piece or what a puzzle looks like by looking at one piece. So you can't get the full picture. And, and usually when I do these webinars, I, I try to make sure you guys know this is only one piece, right? So, you know, it's, I, I really only give you the first two things because I can't give you all of the things in a webinar. It's just not possible in the space of, of an hour or so. So so this year I decided I'm gonna do something a little different. This year I'm gonna give you the whole picture. So in the next, I don't know, we'll see how long it turns out to be, 30 to 40 minutes, let's say. <laughs> I don't know how much I'm gonna talk. Let's see what happens. In the next 30 to 40 minutes, <clears throat> I am going to give you the whole picture, not just one puzzle piece, but the whole picture. The all the things you need to be successful in the new year. Now, I'm also gonna ask you some important questions and I want you to ponder the answers and then decide what you're going to do differently in the next 12 months to make your business and your life different. So, we're gonna start with the first thing you need to be successful in the new year. You have to set goals. Look how loudly I'm saying that. <laughs> so, you have to set goals, okay? now. When I hosted my webinars last year, I discovered that a lot of people weren't setting goals for their year because they were afraid of not achieving them. And I'm wondering, is that something you did? How'd that work out for you? <laughs> How did 2014 go for you? The first thing we like to do in any year-end planning is we like to start by wrapping up the year, asking what worked, how did the year go? Um, and, and so the first question is, how did 2014 go for you? How long, how has this year been? Was it better than the year before? <clears throat> and looking back, do you feel like you've made progress and accomplished more than you did in 2013? And did you set goals for 2014? And if not, what kept you from doing that? Was it the fear of not achieving your goals? Because here's the thing, you can avoid setting goals, setting a stake in the ground, right? Because you're afraid you won't make it there, and I guarantee you won't make it there. <laughs> um, or you can set a stake in the ground and you can say, this is where I want to be by the end of next year. And maybe you get there, or maybe you don't, but either way, you are definitely gonna be closer than you are right now. And that, because that's really just how it works, right? When you set a goal and you really focus on that goal in your mind's eye, you begin to align your actions toward the goal. So you start to think about every decision you make, you're thinking, is this activity getting me closer to my goal? When I did this activity before, was it helpful in getting me to my goal? And, and you start to think about those things. Now you can do that or you can not set a goal and end up at the end of next year exactly where you are right now. But I want you to close your eyes for a second, and I don't know if you're closing your eyes or not because I can't see you, um, and also because this isn't live, but, but close your eyes and think about what that looks like. If you repeat that action every year, if every year you say, I'm too afraid to set goals, I'm not gonna do it. I am too afraid to set a goal because if I set a goal, I might not make it, so I'm not gonna set goals. Project that out 10 years. Where are you in 10 years if you haven't set any goals? Aren't you kind of where you are right now? 
it's kind of dismal, right? Like, like the idea of spending the next 10 years being afraid is terrible. And, and I, I can't imagine that. And, and I like to say, I believe in three things. Um, I, I believe in a lot of things, but my, my life philosophy can really be summed up in three sentences. One, feel the fear and do the thing anyway. Because if you don't, you'll end up right where you are. And you'll stay stagnant your whole life. So feel the fear and do the thing anyway. Be good to people. Don't do bad things. Do good things. Be honest. Be authentic. Be true. And, and you know, tell the truth, right? So be good to people. And three, live a life, live a life of opportunity and adventure. Opportunity brings more opportunity. That's a lesson that my husband taught me. So if you live a life of opportunity and adventure and you take all the things that are presented to you and you say yes, your life is kind of amazing. And I live those three things every single day. So I think it's important to feel the fear and do the thing anyway. So set your goals. If you did set goals for 2014, how close did you get to those goals? And did you make real tangible progress toward your goals? And are you closer now than you were before? Or did you avoid setting any goals? And if so, how'd that work out for you? So how did 2014 go for you? Question number two, what would you do differently in the past year if you had to do it over again, right? So if you had a time machine and you could go back to the beginning of this year with the knowledge you have now, what would you change? What would you do differently than what you did before? And what do you think the results would be? So what mistakes did you make? And did you start with the biggest mistake of all, not creating goals for the year? Remember, without a location, the GPS cannot help you get where you want to go. So if you don't have, if you don't know how to get there, and you don't want know where you're going, you can't even figure out how to get there, right? So if you if you don't know, here's where I'm going. Well, you don't know what you should be doing. <laughs> so there are three parts to the successful year. And 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 before we get to the second part, I'm going to tell you what I would do differently in the past year. I don't and I don't often talk about my own business. Um, I talk a lot about my myself and my business, and, and I do that because I think it's helpful for you, and I want you guys to know that I can relate to where you are. But I don't often talk about, um, you know, my regrets in business. Now, um, I will say that I've had a very successful year. Um, you know, probably I've had the best year I've ever had, and it has been an amazing year. Uh, one of my goals was for my book to become a bestseller this year. It was it was a goal for last year as well. But we didn't quite hit the mark last year, but we did hit the mark this year. And when I look back on that, I think, okay, that was a stake I set in the ground and I, I didn't set that, I set that stake in the ground last year. I got close, but not close enough. So I set that stake in the ground again this year and I said, all right, I'm starting from a different place this year because I'm closer than I was last year, but I'm going to do it again. And, and I know what worked in 2013 and I know it didn't work in 2013. So we put our efforts towards the things that we knew worked and we made it happen. Now, um, there are a lot of marketing strategies we tried that weren't as successful as we wanted them to be. There are several that we tried that were way more successful than we expected them to be. But um, there's one thing that I've had on my sort of my, uh, my list of goals for several years, and that is always to increase visibility for my business. And it's just a good thing to do to have visibility in your for your target market and your audience for your business. So <clears throat> um, this year... Um, and, and this is one of those things where opportunity brings more opportunity. So for example, um, my um, two years ago, one of the things that I did to increase visibility for my business was to host the Guinness World Record record-breaking event to break the world record for the longest uninterrupted live webcast. And we broke that record. And so as a result of that opportunity, up, it brought more opportunity. So I've gotten a lot of opportunities as a result of having taken that that risk and, and doing that thing. Um, one thing that came this year was I was invited to participate in an episode of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Get Us World Records Special Edition which was basically a week of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire that was all Guinness World Record holders. So the guy who had the biggest comic book collection, he's a very nice man, by the way. Um, the world's fastest talker, who isn't me, by the way. Um, a guy who juggles ping pong balls in his mouth and a guy who breaks toilet seats over his head. And I got to meet all these cool people when we went to Stanford, Connecticut to tape this show. And... Um, 
I appeared on the show and I was very happy with how I appeared on the show. I was really, I really enjoyed the experience. If you want to read about it and you want to see the episodes, it's on my blog at susanbarantinimo.com. That's not the point I'm making here. Um, I also met Ken Jennings, who was on Jeopardy for many, many, many episodes, and he won lots of money, and that's kind of why he's famous. And we always knew Ken was going to play, because when you get there, you don't know for sure if you're going to play. They have a pool of people, and they pay you for showing up, and then if you get to play, you get hopefully more money. Um, hopefully. <laughs> but um, anyway, we knew Ken was going to play, and, and I figured Ken would play last, because the next week after Guinness World Record Week was Celebrity Week, and Ken kind of straddles between um, Guinness World Record holder and celebrity. And so he was a great person to introduce Celebrity Week. Out of all of us, he was probably the best known. So um, when I saw Ken's episode, and and I have not, I did not mention this in my blog post, so I've really only talked about this with my husband. So you guys are getting kind of a secret inside scoop here that I spontaneously decided to tell you about. <laughs> my, my assistant is looking at me like, what, what are you doing right now? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm telling a story. All right. So, um, anyway, this is what happens when you do a webinar when you're starting to get a cold, by the way. <laughs> so anyway, um, when I watched Ken Jennings episode, I saw Ken do something really smart and it was kind of the thing I thought I was going to do, but didn't do. Ken very cleverly interjected in his conversation when, you know, when they do the banter, you know, and they talk about you and what your life is and all that. Uh, he cleverly interjected that he has written some books. Now, when you play a game show like this, you're contractually obligated not to promote your business or your books or whatever it is you do for a living. You can't promote any company. You can, so I could not mention business and blue jeans, the brand. Uh, but I could have said that I wrote a book and that was kind of my intent going in. But here's what happens. Now, I've spoken in front of many, many, many crowds over the years, hundreds of crowds over the years, and I've been on camera live for 36 hours. So I don't really worry about being on camera or being in front of a lot of people. I was so excited to play the game, to get to the questions, that I allowed myself to stop thinking of it as an opportunity for PR, and I thought about it as the game. And so in doing that, I never mentioned my book. And so that's what I would do differently if I had it to do over again. And if you read my blog post, there are two other things that I would do differently as well. But, but frankly, that's a, that's a pretty big one. And, and I felt a little like I let down my publisher and I let down, you know, my business. And, you know, I, I, honestly, you know, my husband has been very supportive when I've talked to him about this. I sort of can't believe I'm telling you guys this right now. But anyway, uh, my husband has been really supportive of me as I've told him about this. And, and um, everyone has said, you know, they're, they're really happy and, you know, they think I did a great job and all of that. Um, so my point is, you know, you can be really hard on yourself about the things that you would do differently, but you, you don't want to be, don't, don't do that. Don't criticize yourself. You know, look, look back and be fair and analyze um, and, and try to put some metrics into your business so that you can measure things and say, this was successful, this wasn't successful, rather than just, I think it was a good effort, or I'm not sure how it really worked. So you want to be thinking about those kinds of things. Now, um, you want to, I'm curious if you've, if you've started thinking about next year yet, because we're so close to the end of this year. Do you know what your goals are going to be for next year? Have you even thought about 2015 yet? Are you going to set goals? And if you do, do you have a plan to be held accountable for working toward them? One thing that I do see over and over every year is that people wait until January 1st or beyond to start planning their new year. And it is one of the biggest mistakes that you can make. And it's funny because, you know, I know, I know this time of year, we're in December. It's the busiest time of year for most people. People tend to focus on what they perceive as their immediate needs. And preparing for the holidays usually comes first, Right. The problem is that even though the holiday season feels very important, and it is, um, if you want the next holiday season to be better than this one, you just can't ignore your business and life planning. And, and I do. I get emails and phone calls from people going, are you going to rerun that webinar in January? And um, can we do a planning session <laughs> in, in mid-January? But if you wait until January to start planning your new year, you're going to be playing catch up all year long. So that might be the first thing to do differently in the new year. Start planning your year now so you hit the ground running in January instead of playing catch up. So you set your goals 
and then you create a plan. Creating a plan is so important because you know what happens when you put your location where you are now and where you want to be in your GPS? It creates a roadmap to get you where you want to go. And if you don't have a plan for getting where you want to go, how can you get there? Doesn't that seem incredibly logical and intuitive? So why haven't you achieved your goals yet? Have you achieved everything you set out to achieve? I'm guessing you haven't. You know why I'm guessing that? I'm an overachiever and I haven't achieved all my goals yet. And so I'm guessing even if you're an overachiever, you haven't achieved everything you set out to achieve. So if not, why not? What's the real reason? Because more often than not, I find that the reason people haven't achieved their goals is that they don't know what to do. They don't know what they're doing wrong and they don't know what they're not doing. So what don't you know? And sometimes you don't even know what you don't know. It's again, like looking at that one puzzle piece and trying to figure out what the whole picture is. Sometimes you don't know how much you don't know. So you might look at, and and I've, I've had a couple of clients who came in and said, you know, I tried this strategy that I saw this guy do and I tried it and it didn't work at all. Well, that's because you didn't know what was behind the scenes. You saw somebody do a teleseminar or you saw the strategy from the outside, but you don't know what all the inside stuff is, right? So there's so much that you don't know. And sometimes you don't even know what you don't know. Um, I also find that people wait a long time to get help. And I, I think that's for two reasons. One is that it's an enormous financial commitment to get the proper help, right? Let's be honest. It's a lot of money. Um and, and sometimes people hire the wrong kind of help. So for example, I've had some clients who came to me and said, you know, I hired a virtual assistant to get me more business, but it didn't work. Well, no, of course it didn't work because that's not what VAs do. VAs are not supposed to get you more business. VAs are supposed to take a bunch of work off your plate so you can go get more business. <laughs> but if you're not getting the business, um, your VA isn't going to really help you that much. Um, and sometimes you hire a coach and you're hoping that person can grow your business, right? Um, and okay, I'm going to get on a little soapbox here. Most coaches don't know how to truly help you grow your business. Okay. Um, I work with a lot of people. Every single one of them has fears. Okay. And I would say a good percentage of those people were afraid when we started working together. You know the drill, right? I mean, you hire a coach and it is scary at first because you don't know what you're getting. You know, you can, you can read testimonials, but how do you really know, right? And I have that experience, right? I mean, I think, you know, anybody who has ever hired a coach, you know, it's an investment, even at the lower end of the the pricing structure, it it, it can be a big investment for people. And here's the thing, Um, you can hire coaches who have amazing testimonials and the coaches can be terrible. And, And I've done that in my history. Like many years ago, I didn't know how to hire a coach and um, I didn't know the questions to ask. And I hired coaches who suggested bad strategy after bad strategy that flopped and flopped and flopped. I worked with someone who made very big claims and they were all lies, every single one of them. And there are coaches out there who are far more well-known than I am. And they make big promises and they don't follow through on them. And then when people write blog posts and tweet about how their their, their strategies weren't successful, they have lawyers who intimidate those people and threaten them with lawsuits. And it's cheaper to remove your blog post than it is to fight someone like that. Um, there are just people out there who are bad and who you shouldn't trust. And the barrier to entry in coaching is so low that the market is flooded with people who, look, they're probably good people, okay? But they don't know the first thing about growing a business successfully. And this is a piece of my industry that breaks my heart because... It does so much damage to the industry as a whole. And I'm always a little devastated when I find out someone's been lied to and a coach has taken their money and delivered nothing in return. And the reason it hurts me so much is that I feel your pain because I've been there. And I've sat in webinars and teleseminars and I've read testimonials and I've wondered, this person sounds so good. How can I believe in them? And it is hard. And so, um, you know, the first thing I can tell you is that we have a, a document called questions to ask when you're hiring a business coach and they're tough questions. But if your coach can't answer them, you shouldn't be working with them. And and that's the bottom line. And they are the questions that are designed to ferret out the frauds. And I'm sorry to say it because I know there are a lot of good people who have become coaches because they lost their jobs or they were laid off or whatever. But if you're not trained 
And you guys, I'm sorry, I'm well-trained. I'm well-educated. I have a master's degree in social psychology. I have trained as a coach for decades. And, and I am constantly training and constantly educating. And, and I have been doing the work. And I have a track record. So it, it drives me nuts when there are people out there who are making these big promises that they can't deliver on. And you guys get taken advantage of. And that makes me mad. So Back to, again, another deviation. Sorry for the soapbox, but that's how I feel. So, um, you know, the reason you haven't achieved your goals yet, what is it? What's the real reason, right? What's at the heart of that? And I think almost not more importantly, but as important, what's it costing you not to have gotten where you want to be? One thing that I remember from when I was struggling, and, and I make no secret of the fact that the recession was really hard on me, and hard on my business. And I'm proud that, that we kept our doors open and that the business you know, continued and we made it through and, and are thriving today. But um, when I was struggling, not getting where I wanted to be cost me, not just in dollars, and it did cost in dollars, but not just in dollars, but in self-respect. I remember thinking over and over, why can't I make this work? What's wrong with me? I mean, I'm a smart, educated woman. What am I missing? And I remember looking around me and it felt like everybody else was making it work and everybody else was making a living. So why not me? And I constantly felt like I was letting everyone down and it was an awful, awful feeling. And the stress of the financial struggle alone was horrible. And I used to fear constantly. I had this sick, twisty feeling in my stomach all the time. And it was awful. And I think I do think that most entrepreneurs and small business owners who experienced the Great Recession have some of that money-related anxiety left over. Like even if you're successful today, like I'm successful today, I'm on, I'm on the other side of this you know, whole thing. But I still every once in a while have that like money brain junk, right? And I think that anybody who went through the recession does have that. Um, and that's definitely something that I work with on my client, with my clients all the time because I think it is an important piece. So I want you to think about what it's really costing you not to achieve your goals. And, and if your business hasn't done what you thought it would do, if you haven't been able to get where you want to go, what does that feel like? It's, I know it's not a pretty feeling, but what does it feel like? And now that we've gotten through the junk of what it would feel like not to have gotten where you need from the past year, what would it feel like to achieve your goals, right? What if you did achieve your goals, if you didn't have to worry about money anymore, and, and if you had income coming in regularly, and systems built in to, loss, to, to accommodate if you lost a client, right? Like, what would that feel like? Because I remember before the recession even, um, you know, many years before that, if, if I lost a client, it could break me. And it always scared me that a client could say, I'm ready to go solo. Now, in, in the coaching industry, if you have a client who says, you know, I feel like we've done some of this, you know, a lot of this big, heavy lifting work, and I feel like I'm ready to lay the groundwork to go it on my own, that's actually a success that I consider that a success. I'm not in business to create dependent clients. I don't want people keeping me on the payroll longer than I need to be. Um, it's, it's one business model that a lot of coaches use, but it's not something I'm into. And, and I think, you know, a lot of, a lot of my clients do stay with me for many years because there's a lot of work to be done and they have me stay on as a consultant to guide them in certain kinds of projects. But it's not a failure to me if a client says I'm ready to go solo. In fact, I take the pride in that because it means my cl I've done my job well. It felt many years ago like a failure because the bank account started going down. If you lose a client, you got to replace that client. Um, and that's, you know, that can be a lot of work. But if you have the systems in place so that if one client leaves, you can quickly put one in, the, when, one in their place, it's not quite so scary. So what would it feel like if you had those systems built in? And let's look at also, a lot of my clients have seasonal businesses. <clears throat> so what if you have a seasonal business? You guys know seasonal businesses, you have a high season. And then when you start getting close to the end of that high season, you start to scrimp and save because you know that low season's coming, right? And so what if your business was evened out and sort of stabilized so that you didn't have to scrimp and save during the high season? What if your business was growing each year and your revenue was higher this year than last, right? What would that feel like? Wouldn't that feel great? And, and think about what you'd be able to do. Save for retirement, pay off the house, heck, buy a house, right? Get a new car, build up the savings account, 
fix stuff that hasn't been fixed or, or do, you know, take the trip you've always wanted to take. Sometimes it's the basics and sometimes it's the luxuries, but, but it's the difference between here and there, right? And, and there's all this wonderful feeling of accomplishment and achievement and self-respect and knowing you have done the thing you set out to do. I mean, if you're working on getting more visibility, for example, think about what it is like to reach more people and to know that you've made a bigger difference in the world. You've helped people. It's amazing. And I'm telling you that from experience. <laughs> so here's the thing. The third thing you have to do to be successful in the new year is you have to stick to the plan. So you have to set the goals, decide what your destination is, create a plan, get the roadmap, and then you have to stick to the plan. You have to stay on the road. And, and I think you can imagine if, if you have a plan to get to a destination, you either have to, you know, you go, you miss the turn, right? You have to reroute or you have to figure out how to get back on path, on the path. And, and certainly life happens and there are things that you have to adjust, but, um, you know, throughout the year, but for the bottom line is, you know, you really, you have to stick to the plan. You can't give the plan a month and then decide it's not working and change the plan. You do have to stick to the plan. Um, you can do what you've always done. And you'll get what you've always gotten. My mom used to say that. Yeah, but you already know how that plays out, right? Do what you've always done. You get what you've always gotten. That's how that plays out. Um, so what haven't you tried? And what are you afraid of right now? What have you been afraid of this whole time? And what are you going to do to make things different? What are you going to do differently in the new year? What's going to happen in 2015 that will be different in 2014. How are you going to make this year better? What's your plan? And how are you going to stick to that plan? And how are you going to be accountable to sticking to that plan? Now, you guys know at the end of all these things, there's an offer and I'm, I'm going to make an offer. Um, I'm going to tell you this offer is good for a whole week. This is December 2nd. This offer will be good until December. No I'll give you till the 10th, the dis till December 10th, because it's a nice round number. Um, I don't play games. Um, I know I could probably get more people to sign up and buy into the offers I'm about to make if I play the scarcity game and said, you have until the end of this webinar or the end of this day, and then it goes away. But here's the bottom line truth. I don't want clients with buyer's remorse. I don't want clients who buy fast because they're scared. I want clients who are ready to do the work, are excited to work with me, and who have had the important conversations with your spouse, your partner, and who have really thought this through. This is not a small commitment. I am not a small commitment. I'm making two offers today. The first is a one-time only session. And the other is for those of you who've been thinking about coaching with me for a while and for whatever reason you haven't jumped in yet. Um, but I do need time to make a difference for you and your business. So at this time, I'm taking two clients, okay? Two kinds of clients. One, for $2.99, I will do a one-time planning session with you. That will basically get you definitely part one, you know, setting the goals and probably most of part two, creating the plan. So in that session, uh, it's a 90 minute session and all you have to do to sign up is go to businessandbluejeans.com slash one. Uh, and that's written out uh, O-N-E, uh, businessandbluejeans.com slash O-N-E one. Um, but here's the deal. It's 90 minute session. Prior to your session, I'm going to send you a workbook. You're going to have a little bit of homework to do, but we're going to work through that workbook together. We're going to set measurable, achievable goals. We're going to develop a plan to make those goals happen. After our session, you're going to have two weeks of email access to me. So you can ask me questions. You can hone your plan. We can discuss any, you know, any thoughts that you have about it for two weeks. Okay. The other offer is that if you want to jump into a year of coaching with me, uh, and you're ready to get started, um, you know, we're going to dive in. Now, if you have been thinking about jumping in and you want to make 2015 a solid year that's better than the year before, I'm going to give you until after our planning session to change your mind. Now, um, I'm doing all the planning sessions in December, first of all. So after December, this is not even going to happen. But uh, many of my clients are done with their planning. They're going to be on vacation shortly. So uh, those of you who are ready to jump into a year of having me alongside to help you on track with your plan and modifying the plan as you go, because no matter what happens in the year, the one thing I can guarantee you is the plan will change. So I'm going to let you, you can buy in right now for diving coaching. And that means we're going to be together for a year. You're committing to a full year. There is a contract. We'll be together for a year. Now, 
if you decide that you, uh, you know, we have the session um, and I know it can be scary to work with someone you haven't spoken with personally yet. So the offer I'm making is if you think you want to do a year of coaching, jump in now. We'll schedule your planning session. If you decide after that planning session that you don't want to work with me for the next year, I will refund all of your first payment minus $299 for the planning session. So I'll send $700 back to you. If you decide to keep moving forward, then we'll keep moving forward at the monthly rate for a full year. Now, I am not the least expensive coach and consultant you'll find. Uh, a part of that comes from my experience in education. I'm well-educated, well-trained, and I have a long history of success with my clients. The other part of my fee comes from the fact that I do not just spend the time in our sessions working on your business. When you hire me, I go to work for you and I get results. It's as plain and simple as I can make it. When you hire me, I go to work for you. You're not paying me for the privilege of working with me. You're hiring me. I work for you. And that's the, that's the bottom line. Um, and I am helping you. I am guiding you. I am mentoring you. I am coaching you. I think of my work as one part coach. I encourage you. I give you a new perspective. I help you fix the brain junk that's holding you back. And I help you to calibrate on the path. But I also look at it as kind of like part Shark Tank or the profit without the investment. Meaning like, unlike the profit and the Shark Tank shows, I'm, I'm not investing in your business. But like the guy on the profit and the sharks, I am a seasoned professional with a decade and a half of experience and success with small businesses. And I show you exactly what to do to grow your businesses and get tangible, measurable results. And I do things that other coaches not only don't do, but won't do and probably can't do. I have a team that works with me and helps me with every single client. We conduct market research to find out where you need to be to reach your target market. And I make introductions for you. I've introduced m several of my clients to major retailers where they've gotten distribution. Um, I've helped some of my clients negotiate deals with international retailers. I've designed brand new marketing plans from scratch for almost all of my clients. And I often record customized on the spot trainings for my clients when they get stuck working on their websites or they're not sure how to do something. Like, you know, I have a client who the other day said, I, you know, I know you said I should be using Twitter lists and I'm not sure how to use it. I block out a little time after each session to record little trainings for you guys so that you know, I can go, hey, so-and-so, I just, you know, here's, here's how you do, you know, we, we were just talking and you said you wanted help with Twitter list. Here's exactly step-by-step -step how to do it. You now have a video that you can follow to help you learn how to do this thing. And it's just for you. Um, my team is also constantly watching out for media and press opportunities for our clients. And in case you haven't noticed, one thing I'm really good at is getting big press and media attention. Um, and I'm not talking about you know, just being on millionaire. If you look at my website, you'll see all the list of places that I've been, places I've appeared. Um, and, and I've done this for my own business as well as for my clients. And, and uh, my clients and I both, we appear in national media often. Um, so if you want that, uh, you want to learn how to generate that kind of media, you want help with that, you should probably work with me. That's one thing I do really, really, really well. <laughs> um, my clients do report that they get significant increases in revenue in their businesses as a result of working with me. And they oddly, not oddly, I know why, but uh, they report that their marriages and their relationships in general improve. My, client, my clients are more confident, stronger. They believe in themselves more. And more importantly, they're happier than before they started working with me. And if you want to talk to any of them, my clients are always willing to provide references. So you can actually talk to human beings and ask them, what's it like to work with her? Is she everything she says she is? And most importantly, here's the question I'm going to ask you about the year that's coming. And make no mistake about it, it's coming. Oh, and by the way, if you want to dive into diving coaching, just go to businessandbluejeans.com slash 2015. Uh, the way this is all going to work with the, the coaching is uh, you'll sign up for the first month. We'll have the uh, planning session. And then after the planning session, you'll say, yes, I want to stay or no, I don't want to stay. And then if you want to stay, we'll send you a contract and you have to sign that within 48 hours and send it back. And if you decide not to stay, we'll send you back $700. That's the way it's going to work. We've never done anything like this before. I'm trying it out to see how it works. And we'll know next year if it worked. Um, <laughs> so here's the question I'm going to ask you about the year that's coming. Are you going to take action and do something now to make this next year a big success, a year that's better than any of the years that have come before? Are you going to do that? What are you willing to do to make big things happen? And what are you waiting for to make big things happen? Like, what have you been waiting for all this time? 
And where do you want to be one day, one year from today? Where do you want to be? Do you want to be where you are now? Or do you want to be a bigger, better, happier? And, and you want your business to be in a better, more successful place. I mean, where do you want to be? So the one thing I really want you to take away from today's event is that I want you to plan your new year. Whether you work with me or not, I want you to think carefully about the three things you need to be successful in the new year. You have to set a stake in the ground, set a goal for where you want to be at the end of the year, create a plan to get to the goal, and you have to stick to that plan, though you may have to make minor adjustments along the way. So I want to say thank you again for watching this video and, and for sharing your time with me. Uh, I know this is a little different than what we've done before. Have a wonderful holiday. If you have any questions, you can email me at susan at businessinbluejeans.com. That's susan at businessinbluejeans.com. Uh, have a wonderful holiday, and I look forward to seeing some of you in the new year.